Hey guys, welcome back to my workbench. Inverted G here. Uh, just going to show you some methodology for creating a wing out of regular foam board. Now this foam board for the ribs, I've actually pulled the paper backing off. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to be doing some spars. I've got a leading edge and a trailing edge. So I'll just basically explain as I do it. I'll do it, come back. So the spars are basically like you normally would any other spar for a flight test basic model. Just run your bead of glue, press. It's not really that hard. Again, not a whole heck of a lot. You don't need to go crazy. Okay, so now you have a basic spar. So now what you're going to do, if you're going to be making a large wing, you just make this longer. This is just a basic construction. You can reconfigure it however you want. I'm going to give you some basic pointers along the way. Alright, so here we are back again. I've... Uh, between last and this time, I've just created a line in the middle of the spar to mark approximately where my rib is going to go. So then all you do, some glue, and you're just going to glue each of your ribs to your spar. Okay. Don't worry too much about alignment because the best thing about foam is that it can bend and flex. Of course alignment will help. Okay. So then after that, you take your second spar and do the same thing over again. Alright, so here we are got the two spars in place. It's a little bit wiggly side to side, but the more ribs you add, the more sturdy it's going to be. So what we're actually going to do now is put on our leading and trailing edges. And one of the things you're actually going to do uh, is take your paper backing and peel it off on one side first. So you have the paper backing on for your trailing edge you want it to be there so when you put in your hinges you have a more sturdy secu securing point whether you use your fiberglass or or just basic piece of plastic floppy disk material for your hinging or whatever so then you mark your midpoint in this case it's going to be three inches this is a six inch strip and again that just helps for alignment on the trailing edge. Again, you don't need to go crazy. You just need to make sure that everything's in good alignment. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a ridge, but that's good. We've oversized it. Might be able to see a little bit closer there. A little bit of a bump. That's okay, we'll go over that with a sanding block. So now for your leading edge. First what I do is I only peel off one side. Just one side. Just for applying the glue. And since this is shorter, I wasn't too much concerned about meeting the midpoint. Obviously, if you're trying to build straighter, it will help. But for demonstration purposes, 
this will work just fine. So notice here how on the leading edge of this, I've got a problem there. That's on purpose. So what I'm going to do now is peel up the piece of paper. And I've already peeled off the piece on the bottom side. I'll show you here on the or on the top side, I'll peel it off on the bottom side for you from this bar. So you've got all foam contact points. So now, take your sanding block, just a basic sanding block, and just lightly go over it. I'm using 120 grit, just to blend it in a little bit. And then on the leading edge, just run across it just till it's blended. Again, don't have to go too crazy. Take your time. Be patient. So I'll come back once it's all sanded. Alright, we're back. Leading edge has been sanded lightly. Give it a basic front shape that you want. Now what you can also do is you can take a piece of wooden dowel from your hardware store and you can trace around that to give you a curved leading edge if you really want to. That'll do just about the same thing as, as what we're doing here. It'll also give your leading edge a little more robustness um, uh, just in terms of dings and hits and things like that. But for all intents and purposes for this, just to give you an idea of how the basic construction can go. Now, with this wing, the way it is, you would think, oh, well, you know, this isn't going to be very strong because, you know, you can bend it and flex it and this and this. So you can add what are called shear webs. And all shear webs are is something that goes in between each rib up against the wall like that. And what that does is it adds additional strength. And you can do it on one side, you can do it on both sides. Uh, so it's really up to you what you want to do in terms of how you want to construct your model. Again, just some basic glue. Pop it in place. And then we'll do the same for the other side. So there you have it. There's your basic wing structure. Structure. It's going to be strong. It's going to be super lightweight. It's a lot easier to cut uh, than balsa. It's a lot cheaper than mounted balsa. And now we can go through and I can show you how you're going to cover this. Okay, so we're back. We've got covering material. This covering material is a lot of people call it DocuLam. You can order it online. Uh, I actually found mine at a local sign company. They also did lamination. And I said, hey, looking for this stuff that you laminate documents with, but I need it really wide. And they gave me about two yards of this stuff, and it's about a yard and a half long or wide. And they gave it to me for 10 bucks. So, Pretty cheap stuff, and it works great. It's got the low melting temperature that you want, or low adhesive activation heat. So what I've already done is I've already adhered it to the bottom side, just to show you that it does shrink a little bit. It's not as forgiving as some of the other covering films, but what this does is it enables you to make sure that you have a low heat activation so that you're not completely destroying your foam with your iron. And because I'm super cheap, like a lot of people in this hobby, I actually use my regular old household iron. But I make sure that the steam is off and I do several test runs before I actually use it to make sure that 
my iron isn't too hot. So you just run it along each of the ribs. I like to work from the center out. That's just me. Again, pretty much anything that the covering is going to touch, it's going to stick to. Okay? Just try to get it as tight as you possibly can. That one was terrible. That's okay. You may also be able to find this at a document supply location. I don't know if Kinko sells it or not, or has it for that matter. But once you're done sealing to the sides, I just go over with the iron itself to do a little bit of shrinking. And it's going to heat up the inside. There's an air cavity in there. It's going to heat up. You get it hot enough, you could probably do this with a heat gun too. So if you want to do a scale airplane, you know, like a World War I model or something where the ribs are actually showing, you don't have to think, oh, i got to buy a balsa kit and just do what you know. Grab your Dollar Tree foam board and have fun. So all I'm doing is trimming off the extra. I like to give myself a little extra. There you go. Now what you can do is you can uh, try to get some vacuum form tips if you're into that. Or you can simply take some balsa sheet. You can trace it. And then glue a balsa cap to just to protect the foam from dings and scratches and heaven knows what else. But that's your basic wing. And you can attach different hard points inside the wing using angles and things like that but you can just attach it using gorilla glue or hot glue if you want to but gorilla glue is going to fasten the wood to the to the foam better in my opinion so again it's foam but don't be afraid to use this iron it's not going to kill it you just got to make sure that it's at the right temperature so with that you can go ahead and construct any kind of model you want. You can do this same tech covering technique with a fuselage and hollow pieces out. But uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope it's educational. Again, more building with foam with Inverted G. Thanks.